it is. Ah, perfection. Perfection! You can really taste the sorrow. Stick it to the man is not really what I expected. What initially looked like a nice looking but fairly standard 2D platformer quickly showed itself to be essentially a point and click adventure game. And it's a funny one at that. The game is filled with self referential humour, and that humour, as well as the lovely visual style, is very memorable even if the gameplay itself is not. So let's walk you through the first puzzle sequence to give you a feel for what the game is about. You, the hero, comes across a person who's about to commit suicide because his girlfriend dumped him. Because of an ability imparted by a wayward nuclear missile, the hero is able to read minds, and by reading the mind off the girlfriend, he discovers that the reason she dumped him was because she likes nice teeth, and an aging crime lord has a really good pair of chops. So your job as the hero is to go and get the man a nice new pair of teeth. To do this, you need to solve a sequence of puzzles. You need to help a chef turn a human arm into fine cuisine. A man convince his pet alligator to come out of a storm drain. A dog to get revenge on two gangsters that gave it grief as a puppy. And then a disco dancer to win a competition. All of this is done by reading the minds of the people to get an idea of what their trouble is. And then finding the right object in the environment to help them solve their issue. Of course, this being an adventure game, the puzzles need to be solved in sequence. So, for instance, you do need the chef's cooked arm in order to lure the alligator out of the drain. In fact, the game actually follows the very standard formula for the adventure game genre. And were it not for the geeky sense of humour, this game would not be worth a second look. But because it has that geeky sense of humour, players will want to keep playing on just to get to the next scene. There's self-referential humour about platform jumping. There's plenty of inside video game humour, so for instance one of the characters early on has an obsession with the Silver Surfer on the NES. And as we all know, that game was pretty terrible. There's also plenty of visual gags, and the game in general has a very light-hearted and irreverent sense of humour. This is supported by some truly great voice work and writing, and it's all paced perfectly, never outstaying its welcome. Of course, that shouldn't be too surprising considering the script was written by Ryan North of Adventure Time fame. The visual style of the game is obviously gorgeous and backs up the humour quite well. And all in all, Stick It to the Man might not be a classic game, but it's well worth playing. And while the Vita version will be released later on, this will be a cross-buy game. So if you do have a Vita, make sure you pick this one up, because I do have a feeling that this will be even more fun when it's something that you can play on the go. I am an adult human, and my major criteria in selecting a mate is... Frontier. That's what it's called, right? It's beautiful, endless. Feel the warmth of the sun millions of kilometers away on my skin without any atmosphere to stand between us. The upside is it's a truly amazing feeling. The downside is I'm truly about to die. Who would have guessed I'd die floating alone in space? You know? I mean, until now, I'd never been any higher up than the top floor of my apartment building, and I only went up there once. My mistake. 